In this video, I am going to explain introduction, theory and carrier gases used in gas chromatography. If you are new on my channel, please subscribe. Now let's start introduction. Gas chromatography is the technique of choice for separation of thermally stable and volatile compounds. The compounds having volatile nature and some thermal stability can be separated by this technique. In 1943, G. D. Kohler and K. Thial developed the gas solid chromatographic technique. Martin and Sang in 1950s invented the technique of gas liquid chromatography. John Martin got Nobel Prize for development of partition chromatography. Gas chromatography is of two types. First is gas solid chromatography and second is gas liquid chromatography. In gas solid chromatography, mobile phase used is a gas and stationary phase used is a solid. Now mobile phase is a phase which carries sample with it and stationary phase is a phase which held the sample or retain the sample on it. Now these terms like mobile phase, stationary phase, illusion, illuant, illuate, these all terms I have explained in the previous video introduction of chromatography. Link is given in the description box. Now separation of sample in gas solid chromatography occurs due to adsorption on solid stationary phase. This gas solid chromatography has limited applications because of semi-permanent retention of polar molecules and severe telling in elution peak. Some low molecular weight gases can be separated by GSC for example hydrogen, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbon disulfide these gases can be separated and analyzed by GSC. Now GLC, uh, gas liquid chromatography, here the mobile phase used is a liquid and a stationary phase used is also a liquid held on some solid support medium. Separation of sample mixture occurs due to partitioning between these two liquid phases. Now we will move towards theory of gas chromatography. In that we will see properties of dissolved gases. First property is dynamic equilibrium. If in a vessel a non-volatile liquid A and a soluble gas B are placed and the vessel is sealed, then the gas B in gaseous phase comes into equilibrium with the gas dissolved in liquid phase and the distribution of gas between these two phases remains constant. Although the total number of gas molecules above the liquid and in the liquid stays same, a rapid interchange takes place between the molecules in these two sta stages. This interchange causes gas molecules to be in dynamic equilibrium. It means that if a gas molecule is entering in the liquid phase that means it is getting dissolved in liquid at the same time one molecule one dissolved gas molecule is leaving the liquid phase and going back in the gaseous phase. Now due to this rapid interchange the gas molecules are said to be in dynamic equilibrium. Now this is called as partitioning of gas molecule in gaseous and liquid phase. On an average each molecule of gas B spends a constant fraction of time in the liquid phase and remaining time in the gas phase. Now this is very important in relation with gas liquid chromatography. Second property is adsorption of gas molecules. A gas flows faster through a empty tube than it flows through a sand filled tube. If we take two tubes one is empty and other one is filled with sand 
and we allow to pass gas through it then gas will flow fast through the empty tube but it will flow slowly through the sand filled tube because sand is acting as adsorbent here some of the gas molecules are adsorbed for some time on this sand and that's why it flows slowly now this is important in relation with gas solid chromatography now we'll see principle here the principle is of gas liquid chromatography because of its wide applications gas liquid chromatography is also known as gas chromatography the principle of separation in gc is partitioning the sample mixture to be separated is converted into vapor and it is mixed with gaseous mobile phase the sample component which is less soluble in stationary phase will travel fast through the column and get eluted first the sample component which is more soluble in stationary phase will travel slowly through the column and eluted components with difference in partition coefficient will get separated now we'll see instrumentation of gas chromatography it starts with carrier gas carrier gas such as helium hydrogen nitrogen can be used they are filled in cylinder under high pressure to regulate this pressure pressure regulators or flow meters are used in gas chromatography this flow of carrier gas is then connected with sample injection port where the sample is injected into the column sample injection port is a part of o1 it is a high sensitivity hot air o1 in which this sample injection port is present this sample injection port is then connected with separation column where the carrier gas and sample mixture is flowing through it sample will get separated and then it will get detected by a detector this detector is then connected with recorder where we will get peaks of our separated sample now this is overall instrumentation of gas chromatography here the major components of gas chromatography are carrier gas second is sample injection port third is separation column fourth one is hot air oven fifth is detector and next is the last one is a recorder now we'll move towards carrier gases used the purpose of carrier gas is to transport sample through the column to the detector selection of carrier gas is very important because it affect both column efficiency as well as detector performance the ratio of carrier gas viscosity to the diffusion coefficient of sample components should be as small as possible now we'll see criteria for selection of carrier gas in gas chromatography first criteria is carrier gas should be inert it should not react with sample or stationary phase or any hardware in connection with it carrier gas should be suitable for detector used and sample to be analyzed carrier gas should be readily available in high purity impurities such as oxygen or moisture should not be there because presence of oxygen or moisture will lead to deterioration of column as well as detector it should give best column performance with required speed of analysis it should have good thermal conductivity next criteria is carrier gas should be available in economical price it should not be high expensive carrier gas should not cause a risk of fire or explosion hazard so these are some criteria depending on one has to choose carrier gas now there are a uh, few carrier gases used in gc such as helium hydrogen nitrogen these carrier gases are used in gc they are having some advantages as well as some 
disadvantages first we'll see helium helium has excellent thermal conductivity it has inert nature low density it is available in high purity but the drawback is it is expensive hydrogen it is also having a good thermal conductivity low density it is cheap also but the disadvantage is that it is it may react with unsaturated compounds and may create fire or explosive hazard next is nitrogen nitrogen is inexpensive but it gives re reduced sensitivity of detector so amongst these we have to select one of the carrier gas depending on, on our requirement one more carrier gas can be used that is air but air is used only when oxygen in the air is useful to detector and it is useful for separation for example if the detector is if the detector is flame ionization detector then air can be used as carrier gas because that detector is unaffected by presence of oxygen now pressure regulators flow meters are required to control the flow rate of gas because the gases are filled in cylinder under high pressure and to regulate that flow rate pressure regulator or flow meters are used flow meters of two stage are generally used first at the cylinder point and second at the column point now the inlet pressure usually it ranges from 10 to 50 pounds per square inch and this pressure 10 to 50 pounds per square inch will lead to the flow rate of 25 to 150 ml per minute in packed column and 1 to 25 ml per minute in open tubular column the flow rate of gas will be constant if the inlet pressure remains constant so this is about the carrier gases used in gas chromatography the next that is injection port injection systems in gc and columns used we'll see in next video thank you for watching my video keep watching subscribe my channel and if you like it uh, please share my video